Yo, Sanjay Uchiha here, people giving you my review for Boruto Naruto Next Generations, episode one. <laughs> Titled Boruto Uzumaki, or Uzumaki Boruto, I guess, depending on if you want to um, say it in the order in which the Japanese would say it or the English. But yeah, um, getting into it, people. Um, just a little note if you haven't seen my review on Naruto Shippuden episode 500, you should definitely check that out. I'll link that at the end of this video, of course. But yeah, it's really the end of a uh, era, people. Episode 500 of Shippuden marked the end of... Well, now when you think of it, both the anime and manga covering the story of Naruto. And now we get into the next generation, literally speaking. Um... <laughs> I know a lot of people have their concerns going into Boruto if they're going into it at all. You know, stuff like, you know, they're milking the franchise, um, beating a dead horse, um, Boruto is just going to be a ripoff, it won't be as good as the original, yada yada yada. <laughs> but I must say, um, even even when the Boruto Nars the movie came out, um, that was a clear indication that they, the, the, the creators know what they're doing really and truly in um, letting Boruto stand out from its predecessor essentially. And I think that what, that's what this episode helped to really establish. And I think like some of the fears that people have, it's understandable, or I guess some of their pre-complaints, it's understandable. but. I think this episode does a great job in establishing the <clears throat> start of the Boruto side of the... I mean, at the end, it's still in the Naruto verse, so... Yeah, it helps It helps start things off in a refreshing way, really and truly. It's pretty chill with, of course, some foreshadowing here and there. So, generally speaking, it was a great start, honestly. Um... Just one little note before I get into this even more. Um, this Boruto Naruto Next Generations anime, it's still based on the Boruto manga that is 11 chapters in as of this recording. <coughs> um, it's monthly, by the way. Um, and it does start off the same way as the manga. However, this Boruto anime will be starting like after the apart from the start which is the first like minute or two of this episode which starts the same as the manga the anime will be starting at an earlier point in the timeline as opposed to the manga so there's that for you <clears throat> i actually have a video not directly relating to that topic but covering content in terms of the timeline of the boruto um, portion of the Naruto verse. I think I'll have that up later tonight, so <clears throat> look out for that. But I think I've chatted on for long enough. Let's get into the nitty gritty of the episode. So, really and truly, just like the manga, we start off with a flash forward where we see the village of Kanoa has been destroyed and we see Boruto, an older Boruto, going up against this unknown character that's been introduced as Kawaki. And he claims that the era shinobi is over and he plans to send Boruto to the same place that he sent the seventh Hokage. So it implies that really Naruto has either been killed by this crush Kawaki or... Well, really and truly, that's what it really implies. <clears throat> um, this really sets up the, the, the tone and mood really and truly. It, it, it's kind of like a technique to grab the viewer's attention. Um, and I think that's obvious really and truly. I mean, hearing that Naruto's been essentially killed <laughs> would really, I guess, spark a viewer's interest. And I think as a storytelling technique, it sets the, it really sets the, 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 the tone for the, for the series. Um, I actually liked when I saw it in the manga, and I really liked it here, especially since the art and animation for this part specifically was really good. The, the colors they're using, like, it's just... The shading and just just the art in general for this first part is pretty good. Um, generally speaking, the art in the episode is pretty good, 
art and animation so i must com commend studio period for that as usual i mean granted going off the last few episodes of naruto shippuden the art and animation was pretty top notch so it, it, it's i guess it's no surprise seeing that they coming into this new series that they they pull off all the stops well i still think they could do better because i <laughs> I don't think it was a high budget episode, like really high, like but it was pretty good. But yeah, continuing really and truly. So Boruto puts on his headband, saying that you know he's still a ninja. He opens his right eye, which has been scarred and he's been closing since the start of the episode, and to reveal it's either I mean it looks like the Byakugan, but I don't think it's the Byakugan. Um it doesn't have the tree but you know like the veins standing up at the side of the eyes. <clears throat> but I'll get into that later. Um, so Boruto engages him, and we get back a flash. Well, not a flashback, but we return back to prison day, and we get the opening, which I think is pretty fitting for the series. The start of this new generation, really and truly, it's pretty chill, and it's sing sung by Kanabu in that song. You know, um, opening 16, 16 of Shippuden Silhouette. They did the intro for naruto storm 4 um and they did the soundtrack the main theme song for the boruto movie so <clears throat> i like how kanabun's again um i like how they're using them as the band to really represent the new gen <laughs> uh, all this new content really and truly but yeah and, and the song's pretty nice it's pretty catchy yeah, i like it but yeah um so we are in present day and we get to see boruto um heading and shikadai really heading just apparently they're just heading to get some burgers really and truly and apparently the point in time that we're at is apparently boruto starts the academy tomorrow so that's interesting to note um yeah that is interesting though and it'll help really establishing that video i mentioned that i'll be putting out later <clears throat> so we get to see Boruto interacting with Shikadai, and we get to see that, I mean, it's obviously hinted through this entire episode, especially if you haven't watched the Boruto Naruto, the movie film, which I highly recommend you do if you haven't, but it's highly evident in this episode through Boruto's interactions that his relationship with his father has been, it, it's, it's not the best, honestly. Due to Naruto's busy schedule, he doesn't have time to interact and, you know, come home every night to interact with his son and his daughter, really and truly. And you can see it's really affecting Boruto as a character. But the point is, Boruto starts the academy the next day, but we get a scene of him meeting this character called Denki, which I'm not sure if... I'm going I wanna go out and predict that he might be Kawaki, but eh too early for that. But we see Boruto rescue him from some bullies and apparently the Boruto already knows the Shadow Clone Jutsu, which is pretty cool. Um of course we find out that Denki is the son of the current head of the Kaminari Mun company, which is responsible for the development of trains in the in the land of fire apparently and <clears throat> they're the ones responsible for actually building the train system within Konoha so that's cool to note yeah and it's cool to note that I mean we saw this from the Boruto movie which I keep referencing but yeah ever since the war ended the development of technology and all that in the Naruto verse has really grown exponentially the village feels a bit more like a like a modern day city in a sense <clears throat> especially from that city you see on the top of where the hokage monuments are um which is refreshing to see it helps to really set the tone and i guess mood for the fact that it really is the next generation which definitely adds to the flair of the episode so yeah it helps to really build the atmosphere <clears throat> i can't complain um yeah, so where was I? So, you know, we meet Denki, and he's not the 
most confident character and really through the episode we get to see boruto's um strong will and his determination to take a path that's different from his dad um really influenced denki to stand up to his dad who actually wants him to learn enter the ninja academy as well to you know be able to take over his train company because apparently his dad is a former shinobi that was in the fort great ninja war so there's that so it's at this point that we get to see boruto go home we get to see hinata we get to see himawari is his little sister of course naruto's daughter and he's late home and as I, the point i mentioned earlier in the review <clears throat> that the the, the, the relationship between Boris, Boruto and his dad, it's, it's reinforced here. The fact that Naruto is busy with his job as Okage and it's affecting his family life apparently. Which is a source of conflict throughout um, early, which will... Well, yeah, because the Boruto timeline is all over the place, but I'll get that. <clears throat> but the fact is, it's a point of conflict throughout the early Boruto material, which helps <clears throat> it it's a plus to the episode because it's a starting point which will help boruto grow as a character by overcoming this conflict which he does by the end of the boruto movie so we'll get to that eventually <laughs> but yeah so we get to see denki through boruto's influence stand up to his dad um he decides that you know if he can become strong and prove to his dad um, that he's strong that he'll be able to choose whatever he wants in terms of studies some then we get some strange astral figure that bites denki and apparently we get this scene of this this <clears throat> i wouldn't say curse mark but this kind of symbol lighting up which is pretty this piqued my interest really this is like an extra level of of detail that wasn't included in the manga as well as the fact that the next day we get to see Boruto who's late for his academy entrance ceremony when he on his way he sees Denki but he actually gets to see the the, the aura of the, whatever is possessing Denki and it's at this point that in Boruto's right eye we see the Byakugan or I might even go to, on to say that's the Tensei gun from the last Naruto movie which is an evolved Byakugan for all of you that don't know um this is definitely an extra layer of mystery that's been added to the Boruto anime because <clears throat> considering this is early on in the timeline this part wasn't included in the manga but of course this isn't filler of course so that was definitely interesting and it added to the whole mystery and I wouldn't say lore just yet, but it definitely adds to the whole mystery aspect of this episode. And it helped to set the interest for the audience to continue to see, want, well, want to see more. So there was that. But with it, he was able to <clears throat> see the aura of whatever is possessing Denki. And it's through this video we find out that Denki has, through his possession, has set up a trap for the bullies that were bullying him earlier. Um, to basically... <laughs> Kill them off um, by luring them onto a train and putting it on track to collide with another train. Well, train prototypes that are considered defective. Of course, Boruto intervenes and through his strong will as usual, helps to, I guess, give Denki the, the, the confidence to, I guess, do what he wants really and truly without anyone else's approval. So it's through that that we get to see that Denki overcomes his possession. Oh, it, give me a sec. Wow. Yeah, sorry about that, people. Phone alarm going off. <laughs> but yeah, um, so he gets over his possession, and through the combined effort of Boruto and Denki, we see them um, get out of the train trap and get to safety and of course the <laughs> boruto being the character it is um uses the remainder of the train to actually get to the opening ceremony and crashes the train into the 
Okage Monument, well, the seven <laughs> Naruto's one, <laughs> which was a pretty cool entrance for me. And of course, Konohamaru apprehends him. And we, we basically get to the end of the episode where we see Shikamaru essentially giving a report of what's happened, saying no one's gonna hurt. But Naruto learns of <coughs> Boruto's exploits and that he actually helped out um denki of course which he turns around to the window and smiles showing that he does love and is proud of what his son has accomplished and that's your episode really and truly um really and truly i think people should get into boruto naruto next generations it's this episode was a refreshing intro to the boruto side of the naruto verse really and truly and I think one of the themes that was echoed out through this episode that and it is what the creators are going for is that Boruto is not Naruto. He will be on his own path, really and truly. So for what it's worth, it really added to it. It was subtle. It wasn't up in your face. So I must say for... I guess Boruto and Hearts Next Generations Episode 1, I would give it a strong, uh, I could say 8.5. Um, the pacing was pretty decent as well, but for what it's worth, yeah, it's a great start to the next generation. Um, as I said, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, share this video out, let me know what you thought about the episode if you haven't watched it yet. Well, sorry, that sounds stupid. <laughs> Let me know what, what you thought if you've watched the episode. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend it. Um, of course, just because it's the premiere, this, this is why this review is so long. But for my next reviews, episode 2 onwards, they will be shorter. Don't worry. <laughs> but let me know what you think. Um, as I mentioned, look out for my video I'm um, discussing the, well, explaining the whole Boruto timeline and why they didn't include chapter 700 in the Naruto Shippuden anime adaption. I'll have that up by this evening or tonight the latest, so look out for that. Um, Sanjay Uchiha, and it's a new generation, people. Hope you loved it. See you in the next one.